What we think we are is the root of our suffering. Andrew Murnane's mind-bending videos about identity, existence, and improving your quality of life has gained him a million followers on TikTok. He's also the co-host of the Dualistic Unity podcast, where he goes more in-depth about these subjects. All right, so around a year ago, I reached out to you. Um, I think I tried to send you some shitty hat that we uh, were trying to sell. Um, a lot has changed in that past year. One, we're not selling those hats anymore. And two, also with you, a lot has changed in that past year. So overall, what do you think is the biggest lesson that you've learned in the past year? Ooh, probably the recognition that I had about a year ago that I am not who or what I think I am, that I am closer to the background awareness of what I think I am. And, and when you recognize that you are not confined to the identity you know, that typically is rooted around your name and your past that you always think or thought that you were and grew up kind of believing that you were, there aren't really bounds to what you are. And you see yourself more so as an identityless aspect of the universe or of earth kind of wandering around. And with that, there's very little fear and worry that comes with it. And it's also, you know, a, a different way, I guess, to exist as opposed to a lot of our society based on, you know, the, the carrot and the stick sort of mentality, um, because there isn't as much that your worth or value is based off of when you see that you're not defined by what you do or who you know, or what you accomplish. It's more so just what you are in the moment that you're experiencing. And so there's a lot more freedom with that freedom from basically anything and everything that we limit ourselves based off of with our identity, essentially. Did you say a year ago at this time, like that wasn't like, did you have that belief? Like how, how strong was that belief for you? Um, so a year to today, no, it's about a year from July 24th, I think, um, before them, I was very caught up in, you know, the belief that I was Andrew, that I was my past, that I was everything leading up to this moment, which is all our identity ever is. And once I recognized very starkly that I was only this moment, that I was only the awareness of, you know, the character as well as the character's environment in the moment here and now, there wasn't as much that I was so afraid of anymore because anything I was ever worried about really was just things that had happened in my past that I was worried about happening again in the future. So before I recognized that I was still very much getting caught up in, in worries that have to do with the identity that we bring with us into every situation that we experience in life for the most part. So something else that has changed a lot in the past year is that you gained a lot of uh, a lot of followers since then too i've noticed um and i heard you say on a podcast that you don't really that you stopped making like follower based goals like a while ago um but with that being said you did just hit a pretty big milestone so with that mindset that you had what was hitting a million like was that a big deal for you or you just rub it off um i don't like to rub it off because i recognize that it is sort of a big deal and I don't want to be, you know, like an ass being like, Oh, it doesn't matter at all. Like it is pretty cool. And I am very appreciative to anyone who does resonate with anything that I say. That being said, you know, I, I, that happened about a week ago and I haven't internally necessarily felt any different. And I knew that I wouldn't, but I think it's important to, for people to remember that like, as you, set goals and, and achieve those goals potentially like they're just split second experiences. And the reality of our existence is the moment that we're always in. And, and so when we get so hung up on accomplishing goals and strictly accomplishing goals with no weight on the step that we're on in the moment, people tend to, you know, get to it and sort of get let down. And so when you can recognize that there is no dictation of your value and your value and your worth is not based on what you do or what you accomplish. There is a much more, there's a much freer way to live your life. And it's 
just recognizing that the peak of life is the moment that you're experiencing in every single moment. And if you want to set goals, absolutely do so to give you direction, but not because you need to, to feel a sense of worth or a sense of value. Yeah. I mean, I remember when, when we hit a million, I just had like a moment where I was like chilling at my friend's pool and I was like, that's cool. Like I was like soaking the moment and then guess what? Woke up the next day, life goes on. And then the thing about these goals is that like you think like, oh, once I get this, like everything will be fine. But like you don't really understand is that like you kind of like adjust to it and you got to get used to like that million being there and yeah. then you like naturally become unsatisfied and you're like, I want more. And also too, the thing about growth is that like no matter how big you get, like you can't like value the growth because like it's eventually going to stop. So like if you're always like valuing growth, like you're just going to be disappointed because one day it is going to stop. Um, so since you don't set goals based on numbers, how do you set your goals then? I don't really set too many goals. Honestly, I am doing things right now with content, doing podcasts like this. I have my own podcast. I create content. I make videos. I do all that stuff. And I really enjoy doing all of that stuff. And so all I really am going to keep doing is, is what I'm doing, understanding that there are going to be opportunities that I can't even see right now that are going to arise from me just continuing to do things that I enjoy. So I'm just going to be there attentive to the experiencing that I'm having each moment, kind of try and enjoy it to the best of my ability and see what happens. And there are times where I will set goals. If I find myself being kind of like directionless in a way, just to like put me in a direction for a few weeks or a few months or whatever, but it's not in order to get there. It's just, if I'm like all over the place and it's just like, all right, I'm going to start going this way and see what happens. Got it. Um, so speaking of the content, how did you get started on social media? And did you think you would ever get this many followers or get as big as you get? Uh, to answer the first question, no, absolutely not. Um, I do have kind of a specific story for getting started with content. So I used to have a pretty rigid morning routine. I would, I would meditate. I would go through, you know, gratitude, positivity, affirmations, all that good stuff. And I also went through this exercise for about a year and a half before I ever started posting content. And I would close my eyes and imagine I was 100 years old. I would quickly go through my life, you know, in my 30s, 40s, 50s, just kind of imagine it up until I was 100. And then imagine being 100 with my eyes closed and really feel it for like a couple minutes. And then I would look back on my life and think, hmm, what do I regret about my life? What do I wish I had done differently if I could do things over again? And the same thing came up every single morning that I did it. And the thing that I regretted was not creating content. I don't exactly know why that was the thing that came up all the time. Something deep inside me just knew that's what I wanted to do. And so, as I mentioned, I did that for about a year and a half before I ever started posting because I was afraid of what people were going to think of me. I was afraid of putting myself out there. I was afraid of being judged. And finally, one day I was just like, fuck it. I know for a fact I'm going to regret this. So, I don't really have a choice anymore. It got to a point where I just didn't have a choice and I just started. I started doing some YouTube vlogs. I started posting more on my Instagram story, ended up tossing part of the vlog on TikTok. It went viral and I was like, all right, I guess I'll do TikTok too. And then that since has been one of my main platforms. Another thing is that um, you live in New York City. How long have you been living there for? Uh, coming up on four years. How has that experience been? Because I'm assuming you didn't live in a city before that? Uh, correct. Yeah. I, I moved here after I graduated college, pretty much right after, uh, back in 2018. So what, what has that experience been like living in a city? Uh, in New York in particular. Yeah, it's, it's been a lot of fun. I mean, I went to school in Philadelphia, and so a lot of my friends from school moved here. My parents are from the area, so I have a lot of family and friends. And I always kind of growing up knew I wanted to be here. We would visit New York City, and I always just kind of loved it and knew that I wanted to live here for at least a little while. And yeah, a lot of people talk about New York and when it comes to like spirituality or mindfulness and they're like, I just can't be there. It's so stressful, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, that sounds like you're giving a lot of your power away and, and thinking that, you know, everything outside of you is going to have a drastic impact on your internal. And the way I think of it is like, it doesn't have to. If anything, it's like a good practice for recognizing that you, the power is within you and you have the power to dictate how you feel 
internally and nothing outside of you actually has to impact that. So there's a part of me that actually kind of finds a strange sort of peace in the chaos and the stress of New York, just recognizing that like, although everything's maybe a little crazy outside of me, it, it's fine inside and it's actually quite peaceful inside. And, and so it kind of, reinforces that recognition that I I have the sort of power to dictate my experience in a sense. Yeah, and I think that's perfectly uh, shown in your videos because your videos are you walking down the street uh, pretty much with uh, talking with all these people around you. Um, how do you how do you able to do that without the social anxiety that comes with it? Because um, I feel like a lot of people, I mean, including myself, like I don't know if I would be able to do that. Uh, how are you able to do that without the judgment of other people get like bothering you and getting in the way of your content? Um, I think first of all, just practice repetition, like doing it over and over and over and over. Like the first few times I did it, quite frankly, I didn't feel super comfortable. I was kind of uncomfortable and I probably didn't have the same sort of energy that I may have in my videos now and just kind of carelessness and just focus on the message I'm trying to por um, portray. Um, but I think too with that is, is recognizing like I've probably filmed close to a thousand videos walking around New York and I've never had anyone come up to me while I'm filming a video and be like, what are you doing, man? Like, that's such a weird thing to do. Like, why are you talking into your phone or whatever? Something like, that. like people come up to me outside of that and if they recognize me or something, but it's literally never happened while I'm filming a video. So I think that just goes to show like people are focused on themselves. They have their own life, their own bubble, their own family, their own friends, their own worries, their own anxieties, like their own entire human experience. that's just as deep as yours. So to think that they're going to spend very much time, sure, they may glance at you they may say a snide remark but all that tells me is they're insecure inside and and they are too insecure to do anything like that so rather than putting themselves out there they they'd rather just cringe and judge as a way to cope with it and and reinforce to themselves that like it's okay that they're not doing what they want to do if that makes sense but it, it never really happens so it just like more so proves my point that people are worried about themselves yeah and, and the way i think about it too it's like um think about when you are almost in a situation where you see someone do something embarrassing or you're kind of like almost subconsciously judging someone guess what next day you don't care anymore yeah. you move on you worry about yourself exactly so that's that's just the way that i look at it um going off of caring less i did see that you used to play baseball and something that I also played baseball too in high school. Um, you played in college, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So I wasn't, I was not good enough to play in college. I was really average, but something that I, uh, I realized is that like the less I cared, almost the better I played. And like the less I was like having like all this like anxiety and heaviness, the better I played. And when I actually was, when there was a lot of pressure on me was when I kind of like would do terrible and not good. So, this is something, this is kind of um, resonates with something um, that you talked about in your videos. What are some stuff that you do to try to let go um, throughout your day to day life? Maybe some tips or just like daily habits that you do? Um, yeah, that's a great question. I mean, yeah, when it came to baseball, I definitely had a very similar experience. And, and actually, when I got recruited the summer I got recruited was because I almost quit and I was going to go run track because I was pretty fast. And I was like, whatever, I'll just do this over the summer because I was just like not enjoying it super well. So like, I just didn't care how I did whatsoever. And I had like the best summer of baseball of my life and got all these like recruiting offers and stuff like that. So it's funny how that, how that works. And I think it's just remembering that you are perfectly whole and complete, like in every single moment that you're experiencing it, no matter what you do or what you accomplish or what you quote unquote fail at, like it doesn't actually dictate your worth whatsoever. Like you can have no amount of successes is going to make you more whole and complete. No amount of failures is going to make you less whole and complete. So when you're, you're, when you're able to detach yourself from and, and what you're doing in the moment from your self-worth or your worthiness and sort of detach from the outcome of the situation, because that's the only reason we ever care about outcomes. It's like, well, I want to do really well on this and well is such a subjective word, but I want to do very well on this because it'll boost me up. And I, Oh, I hope I don't re do really poorly on this because then it's going to tear me down and make me feel less worthy. And so when you're able to disconnect your amount of worthiness, essentially from 
the outcome of the situation and and sort of release that judgment it allows you to work freely and it allows you to take risks and do the things that you've always wanted to do without so much fear of judgment because you know no matter how much judgment you get you know no matter how badly you fail it has nothing to do with what you truly are and and what your worth truly is so when you're able to detach from that it just makes everything a lot easier exactly and i think also too especially when you're younger like it's like you're kind of experiencing all these things for the first time so like you're gonna fuck up a lot and so it's important to like understand that like like when you start anything you're not going to be good so especially when you're first getting started to like be like make sure that you're not too attached to how it makes you feel when you fail because i mean it's just going to happen like it's just the way it goes yeah um now what's the correlation between what you just said about caring less and how you approach your content when it comes to um like not only the numbers, but like the content itself, like what you say. Um, I think knowing that my intention is what it is. My intention is only ever to express myself and help people along the way. I basically just share things that have helped me deal with whatever it may be. Insert topic here, basically. But I think understanding that and recognizing that no matter how someone reacts to my content or how my videos perform, you know, it has nothing to do with, again, like my wholeness or completeness or worthiness or, or any of that. And it's just about expressing myself and, and things that have helped me. And if, if it helps someone great, if someone doesn't resonate with it, like that's okay too. Not a, not every piece of advice is going to resonate with everyone. And, and a lot of times, especially when it comes to, identity based videos or, or videos I post about how, you know, your, your past doesn't define you. Like you are not your past people who cling to their past for a sense of self, even if it's a negative sense of self, they would rather exist with that false sense of certainty about a negative idea of themselves or this idea that they are a victim or have experienced suffering. And that'll, it somehow gives them the opportunity to act in the way that they do or, or validates their actions in a way when they come across something like that like it's probably going to trigger them they're probably not going to feel very great because they're clinging to that idea of themselves even if it's a negative one for their validity and it's kind of like the ego's way of, of self-preservation so when they come across something like that i'm aware when i post those videos like it's going to get a lot of negative comments but when i understand why and can see why it's like i'm sort of prepared for it and so when people typically leave very negative comments without much backing or much thought put into them, it's like, I know this has nothing to do with me and everything to do with them and their current internal state, more or less. So in your one of your videos, you said, um, you quoted Alan Watts saying, the desire for a positive experience is itself a negative experience. What do you think that he meant by that? And maybe try to elaborate a little bit. Yeah, so I think that sort of comes back to the idea of, of peace and my, the way I define peace is basically like just not wanting to be anywhere other than where you are right now. And that can be both physically and mentally. And a lot of times it, it's better expressed as a mentality, like wanting to be in a different mentality or wanting to feel a different feeling than you're feeling right now is going to be a state of resistance is going to be a state of desire because you're desiring for something that isn't right now. And the reality of your experience is right now. So as you desire for things to be differently, like that's impossible. Things can change moving forward, but it's not going to change from this resistance to the reality of your experience. And one of my favorite quotes is what you resist persists. So as you resist the experience that you're having in the moment, it's actually going to make it last even longer. It's going to perpetuate and exacerbate the feelings that you're feeling. But as you're able to accept that, acceptance is always going to lead to peace, is always going to be in itself a positive experience, no matter what your current experience is. Even if you are desiring, you know, to an extreme degree, if you can accept the level to which you're desiring, and you stop desiring to stop desiring. I know that sounds like convoluted in a lot of different ways, but as you can just accept where you're at in the moment, whatever you're feeling, whatever you're going through, whatever your situation is, and then 
act with clarity from there, but through first accepting it, it will allow you to not only act with more clarity, but act more and feel more at peace in what you're experiencing. Because as although it may not always be super easy to do so, it is very simple. It's a very simple recognition, but we get so caught up in wanting to be somewhere else or wanting to get to the next thing or accomplish the next goal or all of these things. And that's totally fine to do, but just recognize that you're not going to simultaneously be in a state of peace. So if you want to be in a state of peace, if you want to get through a feeling that you're feeling, the only way to get through it is to get through it, to accept it fully and allow it to kind of pass through you as uncomfortable as it may be in the moment, the more you resist it, the longer it's going to last. So the sooner you can accept it fully, the sooner it's actually going to pass through you and begin to subside and, and go away. Something else that I've heard you talk about is almost imagining the voice in your head as a child. Um, do you want to elaborate on that a little bit and your mindset behind that? Yeah, for sure. I think I heard that. I forget what book it might have been. I think it might have been The Power of Now or, or something like that. But it's it's a way to recognize that, you know, that we get so caught up as thinking that the voice in our head, like, is our voice. Like, it is what we are. And we are not this semblance of awareness. We are not that which the the voice is able to exist within. And so we get confused into thinking that, you know, like this is, Oh shit, this is literally my voice. And it's like, no, it's, it's not, it's, it's just the program that has been sort of downloaded into you based on, you know, maybe what you've repeatedly told yourself or what someone else has repeatedly told you. And because humans are such habitual creatures, we, over time, the more we reinforce to ourselves that like, that is our voice. We are this thing. We're good at this. We're bad at this. We, you know, can't do this because we've done it poorly in the past. As we reinforce those things, they become habitual and it gets more and more difficult to break those habits. But as you're able to first recognize that that voice isn't actually yours, like it isn't actually like it, it is if you come full circle and recognize that, you know, it all exists within your awareness. So therefore it is all you, but immediately recognizing that it isn't only what you are and, and you're not that voice. You're simply the awareness behind it. So as you're able to recognize that it is just a program or it is, you know, like a child or like this machine that you're aware of, that's always going to be churning up thoughts. It always is going to be just yapping in your ear. It's like, if it was a child, you wouldn't be like, Oh my gosh, like you're so right. Like I am such a piece of shit as be like, you're like, what, what are, you're, you're a little kid. Like go, right, kid. go over yeah. there, you know? Yeah. So yeah, and the thing too, it's like, in a way, like, it almost is coming from like your past child, because a lot of the times those negative thoughts are coming from trauma from when you were a child. So in a way, like, it is kind of also true. Yeah. And that's great how you're saying not to, not to really take those too seriously, because most of the time, they're kind of bullshit. Yeah. And it's important to understand that. Um, so you post very, very consistently, um, both on TikTok and your podcast. Um, so what's your experience with burnout and what do you personally do to try to prevent? Burnout? Uh, yeah, I've, so I've probably experienced like, I don't know, five different, six, seven different bouts of like burnout since starting to create content as much as I do. Uh, and I just allow myself to, to take the breaks that I need. Even recently, like when I was getting close to a million followers, I, was starting to push for it a little bit and i was like oh like i, I want to get to it by this time because like that would be cool or whatever just getting kind of focused on it and then so i took like a week off when i was at like 995k because i was like hold on it doesn't actually mean anything it's just a number like it's gonna happen at some point inevitably and the more i push for it the the worse my energy is gonna get the more desperate i'm gonna seem the the more I'm going to be focused on this completely arbitrary thing that doesn't actually matter. So I ended up taking, like, I didn't post a video. I don't know if it was a week. It, it probably felt like a week because I'm so used to posting so often, but it was probably like five or six days until I was like almost had just like forgotten about all that stuff for a little while. Didn't even check TikTok for, for a very long time. And then when I was like, all right, I'm ready to just like get back to posting because I want to post and I have a lot of things I want to share. Um, so yeah, when it, when it happens, I'll just take a few days off. Sometimes I'll take even 
two days off purposefully and then i'll be like all right i'm i'm good to get back into it and then you know maybe a few months later it's like all right another week off real quick and and just even just focusing on other stuff like doing more instagram q a's because those are pretty easy as opposed to like you know filming a whole video and just like focusing my attention on like easier things to do um has has helped me yeah and a, a motto i mean that's something i can completely relate to um a motto that I have with our content is consistent quality. And um, so basically, if I'm if I'm pushing myself to where the quality isn't consistent, then that's how you know I need to take a break a little bit. And so that's kind of how I, how I base it all. Um, and also just like scheduling time to relax and, and realizing that if you put, don't post a day, like it's not the end of the world. And like half of, when it comes to burnout too, like half of it is yes, making the content. And then the other half of it is like the anxiety almost that comes from like how videos do. And I know we just talked about not trying to care about the numbers, but like that's still something I'm trying to work on. And like, so it, a lot of it is to, um, like you said, like just putting it away completely and just not even looking at it and um, trying to give yourself a mental break from that stuff because it is exhausting. Um, and so you talked about the power of now but what do you think is the most impactful book you've ever read and the biggest lesson that you've learned from it? Mm. Uh, yeah, I, I can, I'll try and think of a book name, but like recently, quite frankly, in the last year, I really haven't read, like I haven't read a full book. And I think like a point I would like to get across is that as important and as helpful as it can be to, consume content, to read books, to gain more knowledge. I think there is significantly more benefit to, I call it like unlearning. And because there's so many things in people's lives where they assume to be the truth, like about themselves, about the world around them. And they think they are, you know, this type of person. So like they can't do this or they couldn't do this because they've done this in the past or all these things. And so as you're like an even more important practice than like reading anything or consuming any content or listening to any podcast is just questioning all of those things. When those things come up that you believe to be the truth, just continuing to question it. And like that for me has been by far the most beneficial thing that I've ever done as, as great as it is to come across a helpful nugget when you're struggling with something. It's, it's like that act of questioning itself is one of the most powerful things I think you can ever do. Um, uh, that being said, like two of the books that sort of got me into s the spiritual realm and like caring less about what people think are The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle and The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck by Mark Manson. Um, so there's a lot of stuff in there. And I think before The Power of Now, it was like I wasn't even aware that I was so caught up in my thoughts. I wasn't even aware of if someone said like the present moment is all there is. I'd be like what do you mean? I've been thinking about what's going to happen tomorrow all day today. Like, what are you, what are you talking about? And it's like, the reality is that that entire time I was thinking about tomorrow, I was doing it in the present because that's the reality of what I am. But I think that was definitely beneficial for me early on. Um, and I think it can be a great, you know, starting point for people. Yeah, I think that was a great point uh, that you said before you talked about the books that I kind of reiterate is that like a lot of it is what you learn, but it's also what you yeah. unlearn, all like the stuff that's like subconsciously programmed into you. Um, so yeah, so something else that I've heard you talk about is almost um, your relationship with your inevitable uh, death. And so what, what do you, how often do you think about that and how does it like dictate your day to day life? So I used to think about it a lot and I think as I've, let go of identity and being confined to, you know, just this idea that I always cling to my perspective on death has shifted a lot. And I think it can be a great motivator, you know, like the Stoics always talked about, I, what is it, the memento mori that, you know, be aware of death or, or recognize that you will die. And I think for when you get caught up in, in worrying about things or worrying about the future, just recognizing that like you might not last till tomorrow, you might not be here next week. So as great as it is to plan for the future, like don't let it take away from your experience that you're having today. And if today isn't enough, like it never will be. So focus on that. But 
I think since then and since letting go, it's a recognition more so that like the only thing that ever dies is the idea of you. Like even our bodies, they are the atoms and molecules that make up our body are being rejuvenated like almost fully every five years, I think. So it's like it's the body's sort of dying every couple of years or every second there's new cells coming in and out. And so I think when you recognize that the only thing that ever dies is, is the idea of you as you can begin to let that go, you can almost like Eckhart Tolle calls it dying before you die. I think, I don't know if he coined it necessarily, but, uh, it's, it's basically the, the letting go of the idea of you and all the fears and, and worries and fear of judgment that come with it. If, if the idea of you is dead and say you're already dead, but you're still, here now in the experience there just isn't that that you know suit of armor that you keep on to defend that idea of you and and fear the judgment from others and you kind of exist more freely imagining that you had already been dead and either this was your second chance or you're just sort of existing in a, a dream and there's nothing that can ever impact your your worth or, or whole and completeness like i've talked about before and as you can let go of that idea of you you can exist for the rest of your life and far more far more freedom than you do having a very solidified idea of yourself last question uh what is the biggest advice that you would give to your younger self if i don't know younger andrew is here right now like what would you tell him yeah i i used to care a lot about what other people thought of me it, it basically plagued me through a lot of high school and made me very quiet and just constantly worried about what people thought of me. And I think one of the first things that helped me get over that was simply the recognition that people aren't thinking about me as much as I thought they were. Like people are worried about themselves and their own lives. And if you can look within yourself and at your own life and, and look at your day to day, you go throughout your day and, and you spend 99.99999% of your time thinking about yourself. And it's not doesn't mean we're all super selfish like in a way we are but it's not in a bad way you know it's just the reality of it so i would go back and tell my younger self like people just aren't thinking about you nearly as much as you think they are dude like they're worried about themselves and their own lives and their family and friends and all their own shit that's going on in their life so live yours and you can live it more freely just knowing that they aren't thinking about you very much which is a very amazing thing and it's it's very freeing because it allows people to do what they actually want to do because so much of our experience is dictated based on what we think of what other people are thinking about us and the reality is that they're just not